In this video, we'll talk about how to identify scale degrees. There are three ways to identify scale degrees, and it's pretty important if you're doing any kind of music theory that you know all three of these things. First off, I'm just going to write a simple scale here. Let's use C major scale. We'll do something really, really easy. So I'll just write C to C. Okay. Now, when we talk about scale degrees, what we're saying is this would be the third scale degree, right? I'm counting one, two, three, third scale degree. This would be the fourth scale degree. This would be the fifth scale degree. So that's all we're talking about is how do you find out which number we're talking about? Well, the first thing is really, really simple. The first way is to use Arabic numerals, which that, that might sound complicated until you realize that Arabic numerals are just the numbers that we use in math class. And this is one again, by the way, not eight. Why? Because this is the same note as that. That's the same scale degree. And to make sure that we understand that we're talking about scale degrees, we put this thing called a caret on top. Okay? This is pretty simple, but just keep in mind, as you get further and further into music theory, we're going to use numbers for a lot of things. We use them for scale degrees. We use them for chords. We use them for uh, intervals. So when we identify a scale degree, it's important that we use the caret so we know we're not talking about the, when we say four, for instance, the fourth scale degree, we know we're not talking about the interval of a fourth or the four chord. We would not call this the four. That sounds really confusing. It sounds like you're talking about a chord. And we wouldn't call it a fourth. That sounds like you're talking about an interval. I know this is tricky, but this is the kind of the language musicians use. We call this the fourth scale degree, right? One, two, three, four, fourth scale degree, and it has a caret. This is the easiest one that there is. The next one, which probably is really familiar to you, especially if you've ever seen the movie Sound of Music, is called solfege. Solfege is this, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do, right? Sounds familiar, you know the song. Let's write it out just so we know. The first scale degree is called do. And remember, this is the first scale degree again, so it ends with do as well, okay? Do, re, mi, these might not be spelled the way you imagined, but do, re, mi, fa. Now, some people say sol with an L. I, um, some people say so. I tend to use so because the way we're usually using solfege has to do with singing. When we do not necessarily singing to perform using solfege, but when we do ear training exercises, we identify notes by, uh, by solfege. And if we call something sol, then it kind of stands out as the only one of these that doesn't start with a consonant and end with a vowel. So just for the sake of ease of singing, I like to use so instead of sol. You might have a teacher that, that does sol instead of so, that's fine too. La, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. That's the really easy way to think about solfege. So we have two pretty simple ways to identify scale degrees so far. There's one more way, and this way is the, this is the most likely way that you've never heard of before. And this is, we, they have a special name for each of these scale degrees. Okay, the first one is called tonic. The second one is called supertonic. Now, just give you some easy things to remember these by. And all of these have special jobs and special functions. We'll talk about that later. Tonic is this key. It's your first scale degree, not key, your first scale degree. Super means above, right? So above the tonic, right? Let's, I'm gonna skip around and I'm just gonna show you some other things. Um, we're going to go to, well, I'll show you this, this one first and then I'll show you the next one. The third one is called mediant. And now I'm going to skip all the way up here. I'm going to show you something. This is tonic again, right? Remember, first scale degree. They're both first scale degree. They're both called tonic. I'm going to skip down to six. I know that isn't quite a line, but that's the sixth scale degree. It's called submediant. Okay, here's an easy way to remember this. If you can remember that mediant is the third scale degree, mediant means like go up three, sub means down go down three, right? So mediant, third scale degree. Again, here's the tonic. 
If I went down by the same amount, I'm at the submedian. Okay, here's the one that people tend to mess up a lot. Dominant is the fifth scale degree. And I should say they don't actually mess it up, they remember it, but they don't maybe don't quite keep in mind why we call it this way. Okay, dominant means fifth scale degree. Subdominant. Sometimes people think of this as below dominant. And you know, whatever works for you. If that works, that seems to be an easy way to think about it. Subdominant comes below dominant. But here's another way to think about it. Dominant is the fifth scale degree. One, two, three, four, five. Subdominant, down five. One, two, three, four, five. Subdominant. Okay? And that might not be the easiest way to think about it. Whatever it is for you, it's fine. Last one up here is called the leading tone. So, especially because my handwriting isn't so great, let me read these all again. We have tonic, supertonic, mediant, submediant, sorry, subdominant rather, dominant, here's our submediant, the sixth scale degree, leading tone, and tonic. Now, you should memorize all of these, but I will give you a heads up that we're going to use these words a lot, so you'll, you'll start to just kind of take it in as the language of music. Everything we do in music theory at this point is cumulative, meaning whatever we talk about, we don't drop it and then move on to the next thing. We will use this in our language when we talk about scale degrees going forward. So it's something you'll hear a lot. I'll give you a heads up, although it probably won't come up for a while, but the, the term leading tone does change when we have a minor scale we distinguish, it's, it's kind of an important thing that has to do with the job. Again, we'll talk about the details later, but if you just wanna know for now, if we were to have a minor scale, uh, let me just do quickly an A minor scale. This is an A natural minor scale. Well, you know, we have, obviously the notes are a little bit different, right? But we still call this a tonic supertonic, mediant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Except we make this important distinction because of the job that it does, and we'll talk about that again, like I said later. This seven scale degree, we would not call a leading tone. We would call it the subtonic. We would only call it a leading tone if it were raised as it would be in a harmonic minor scale to G sharp. Then we would call it the leading tone. Okay, now you would only have one of these in a scale at a time, right? But you could have the subtonic, which would be the G natural in this case, or the leading tone, which would be the G sharp in this case. If that's confusing, please do not worry about it. These are the things to know for now. This will come up in future videos when we talk about the functions that each of these have. If you found that video helpful, please click the subscribe button below to find more videos just like it.